right guys welcome back free tip friday and today we're building well we're building exactly what the title of this video says stairs without stringers have i done this before no i have no idea what i'm doing i'm just making this up as i go along i was laying in bed a couple weeks back couldn't fall asleep because my brain's just going like crazy every night and uh it just came to me like a vision and I was like dude I could build an awesome set of stairs without stringers because really outside stairs just don't I don't know they just don't get me excited you know just the stringers and the treads and the butt ends and you know you can dress them up a little bit to look pretty but ultimately I just yeah I'm not a big fan of just boring old cut stringer stairs you gotta add a little panache so this is what I came up with, and it's, so far it seems super, super sturdy. We don't have it installed yet. I'm going to do a quick kind of temporary installation because I haven't poured a landing for my bottom of my stairs yet. Uh, but we'll just block it up and give it a test, jump on it a few times to see how solid it is. It seems rock solid right now. So here's what we're doing. Watch and learn. We've got these boxes set up with a, I wanted a 16 inch stair tread. So I just mark my 16 inches where I want the overlap. And then we've cut these notches, plumb with each other. And then I grab some uh, ready rod, hot dip galvanized ready rod. I got a bunch of two inch flat bar that I cut into three inch pieces, drilled holes through it to act as like a giant washer that'll span these two pieces right here, which sandwich the ready rod together. So we drop in the ready rod from underneath. Line it up on top, sandwich it with a big flat bar, washer, lock washer, and then a nut. So this one is short obviously because we're mounting that to the deck so we want the tread space obviously coming off the deck to be even all the way down so that's why this box is short but that's pretty much how it goes just like that we got a solid set of stairs now for extra strength just to prevent any kind of racking i'm going to drill alongside my screws i've got end screws going into these little joists here i'm going to pre-drill alongside that kind of at a bit of an angle so I hit the top of that next joist and then I'm going to drop in these 12 inch GRKs to lock the center part of the rim joist into the next step and that should just make this thing super solid. So I'll do that on both of these steps, all three steps, and then let's install it. We've got our staircase in place. Now another nice feature about putting these three quarter inch spacer blocks in between your framing and your fascia board is it gives you a three quarter inch space to mount your stairs to a nice piece of pleasure treated, blah, blah, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure treated, mm. pressure treated plywood. So I'm just gonna screw this in on my line right here. So I'm gonna have to dig this bottom area out here. I'm gonna pour a little bit of a footing. I'm actually gonna put a couple more rocks right there on either corner, scribe the stairs onto the rocks, and then I'll bring like some flagstone kind of pathway up to the stairs once we have them all leveled out. But Feels solid. Maybe somebody will have to get a hold of Matthias Wandel, see if he can check my engineering on the stairs, but it seems like rock solid to me. And it looks really cool to just see the stairs floating like that. No stringers. Well, there you have it, guys. The stairs are officially installed. Everything is rock solid. We poured a little concrete footer here for the stairs to land on. Uh, I've got some plastic wood I had some scrap 
Trex decking left over. So I cut a few plastic shims to hold the framing up off the concrete, about half an inch. That'll keep the bottom of my stair, my stringerless stairs. Come on! 1-800 number, yeah, no. So you can see these stairs look kind of trippy. They look like they're just floating in midair, which I really think that's kind of a cool look. Obviously, uh, building your stairs this way, if you're getting your stairs inspected by a building inspector, they're not gonna pass. Even though they could very well be strong enough, you'd have to get an engineer to do the math and make sure that this is gonna be strong enough and get an engineer to sign off on it if you wanted to build a set of stairs like this. But I'm just doing whatever I want over here at my house. So don't think you can build a set of stairs just like this if you're getting your stuff inspected because it's likely gonna cause you a whole lot of headaches. I like to always have about an eighth of slope on my stairs so that water drains off the treads. I don't want water puddling or sitting on top of my wood treads. So always slope your stairs down a hair so that the water just drains off the front of the nosing. So there's a cool idea for somebody who may be farting around their house wanting to put in a unique set of stairs on the deck or exterior of their house. Your bonus tip for this week, check this out. I'm putting a trim board around this because it always looks way better. Birds are already shitting on my deck. I can't believe this. So there's gonna be a two by six with a miter, 45 right here. So it frames out the deck nicely. You don't see any of the end grain. But underneath, could have left these boards square and, and they would have just sat right down on the edge of this beam. But then you have that gap in there between the, the trim board and these butt ends. And what will happen is leaves and dirt and stuff will get in there and it'll just get stuck and start to decompose and essentially just turn into soil and dirt which will then invite all sorts of little critters to start growing and rotting out the ends of your wood. So what I've done here is I've beveled these back using my track saw. Or you could just do a circular saw with a, you know, a piece of plywood for a fence if you don't have a track saw. And I just beveled these back so any water that goes down in there or dirt will get washed out down in between the, the little gap right here. Now I might cut this a little bit wider so it's more of a 3 8 inch gap. That way I know that water's gonna flush. Anything that gets down in that crack, it's gonna flush it out and down and it'll drain out the bottom of the deck. So this should increase the longevity of your deck boards. I've just left this cedar raw because it's old growth red cedar. It's gonna last forever whether you stain it or not. The stain is ultimately just a aesthetic thing. This stuff will last for 50, 60 years before it starts to rot out in any way, and especially if I keep it clean. And that way also when you're power washing your deck, it'll be sure to blast anything out of there. It doesn't leave any wood trapped and getting underneath, or dirt trapped, getting underneath the boards and just sitting there. When I, when I power wash and hit that joint, it's just gonna blast all the dirt out through that crack and keep the deck clean. And when your deck is clean, the algae and the little microorganisms can't grow, which is what rots out your wood. So you want to keep your deck clean, free of dirt and organic material like leaves decomposing, all that sort of stuff. And your deck should last for a long, long time. Just a little bit of maintenance, guys. So that's your tip. Also keeps a lot of air in there. Having a gap in behind there allows the air to get in there, dry out the wood quicker. And the less time your wood spends saturated and wet, the less likely it is to rot as well. So it's just, you know, it's just, we're just winning. So much winning. And for those of you who didn't catch it in the time lapse, this is your bonus, bonus tip, is when you're laying your decking, the fastest, the most easiest way to do it is just to leave all your boards wild. Run them extra long, let them hang over the edge of the deck. And then when you're done, because a lot of guys will put their trim board on and they'll butt the boards up. But man, if your end cuts aren't exactly perfectly square or your deck is a tiny bit out of square, your square cuts will all look funky and you won't have that nice, perfect, clean line. So it's way easier to just run them all wild, screw everything down super quick, and then just snap a line, put a fence or use a track saw and your circular saw, just run down, cut all the boards perfectly in line with the edge of your deck so that your reveal on your trim board is you know nice and even. You get a nice hangover on your nosing past the fascia. And that joint will just look like C and C beautiful. Okay? So save yourself some time. Don't bother cutting all your boards to length first or trying to get everything perfect. Eliminate that human error nightmare, which I've done so many times, and just 
snap a line, cut them out after, and it'll be perfect. You just wait and see. Yeah, I'm done talking now, so leave me a comment. Please leave me a like. If you're not subscribed, well, you're just, you're just a hateful person. No, that's, that's a little bit harsh. You're just doing yourself more harm than anybody else, so hit the subscribe button, okay? Until next time, Samurai out.